three, two, one. My name is Nick. I'm a full-time trader and entrepreneur. We put out tons of stuff for free for traders. These are real trades. This is real money. I'm putting my money on the line. This is going to be a live trading video. Uh, here, locking in uh, over $1,000 on this trade. Wow, I'd love to get in on this. Technical insights that really look good to me. Here we go, we're live. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the biggest stream of the month every month. We are doing non-farm payroll, talking about NFP today. So NFP, if you are new to trading, if you're watching this video back and you don't know what I'm talking about when I say NFP, NFP essentially is a release each month that talks about the unemployment rate here in the United States. The reason that that matters so much is that unemployment has a big impact on the Fed's decision uh, to raise or lower interest rates, depending on how well the economy is doing. Because one of the biggest movers of money around the entire world is people's jobs, right? If you get paid $50,000 a year, if everyone in the United States is doing that, you got to think that's a lot of money moving. And if a lot of people are not getting paid because they don't have jobs, that shows a weak economy. And if there's lots of people getting jobs and things are doing really well, that's a very good economy. So it's a great measurement in terms of the overall economic health of a uh, of a country. And so it just so happens that the United States being one of the biggest, if not the biggest, uh, watched uh, economies in the world, it happens to be a very, very important figure for around the world. So real quick, good morning to everybody who, who's here with me. Thanks so much for I'm pick, fixing my mic really quick. Uh, there we go, maybe. It seems to want to be fuzzy this morning, but uh, it's a really big release. It's a big, it's a big figure for. Um, it does not want to cooperate. Uh, it's a big figure for people who are, uh, you know, interested in in measuring the the state of the economy. Like I said, more jobs is good for an economy. Less jobs is not so good for an economy. So, with that said. Um, we are going to be doing, as we usually do for these NFP streams, we're going to be going through a bunch of the different US dollar currency pairs, and we're going to be looking, there we go, there it is. Uh, we're going to be looking at things like gold, we're going to be looking at uh, the US dollar, we're going to be looking at the pound dollar, the dollar yen, the dollar CAD. We've got a lot to look at, so I do want to remind you guys, uh, if this is your first time here, make sure to subscribe, make sure to like it down below, but stick around until the very end of the stream, because we're going to be watching the spike together. We're going to be seeing uh, in real time, we're going to watch the news release. We're going to see what the numbers are. And we're going to try and come together and talk about some ideas that may be good opportunities off of the back of this news. Now, um, the big thing about news, you guys, is news has a really big uh, potential to really move the market. And the reason that that matters is that volatility for us shorter term traders is usually a good thing if you know how to capture it correctly, right? Obviously, volatility is a very bad thing if it's on the the hurtful end for you, right? If you're holding on to something and it's going down and you're buying, that's not so fun. But if you're looking to short and you have opportunities to ride something, it could be really, really good. So fasten your seatbelts, hang out with me for a little while. We're going to be sticking around until the news release, which is right now in about 40 minutes or so. Is that right? Yeah, just about 40 minutes. We have the news release. So let's pull that up before we get uh, into the charts for just a moment. Let me see if I can show this to you guys. So we will go ahead and jump over to forexfactory.com. Uh, currently, it is 7.48 in the morning where I am, and we have the news coming out at uh, 8.30. So you can see it's still about just under 45 minutes away, but that gives us plenty of time to talk about setups and ideas to consider going into the actual news release. Now, there's some interesting things that we need to cover here. So first of all, we have news coming out on the Canadian dollar and the US dollar. The reason that matters is because we could very well see the Canadian currency pairs moving as well. And in fact, it might surprise you that even some of the non-US dollar currency pairs will move in reaction to NFP. That's how big of a event it really is. Because when you have NFP moving the market dramatically, right? Uh, it can actually cause the sentiment of other countries to change as well. Maybe there's a maybe there's a country that does a lot of trade with the U.S. and then you know the U.S.'s numbers are looking poor and they're like mm, that could hurt our economy as well. And then they trade in sympathy is what they call that. So um, you know you've got you've got opportunities and potential to really move the market uh, massively here going into the news release. So again, Canada has unemployment numbers coming out at 8:30 a.m. Eastern, uh, and then the U.S. has the NFP 
or non-farm employment change uh, at the same time. So these are the numbers that are going to be impactful. So before we jump into the charts and talk about setups, let's point this out. So they have a forecast right now of 645,000 jobs. So we can see the, un the employment change. They're saying that this is the change in number of employed people during the previous month, excluding the farming industry. Um, and the reason is because you know you want to leave leave out things that skew the data too much. So when you're looking at this, uh, basically what we're saying is that obviously if there was more jobs created, then that is good for the currency because it shows strength in an economy. Uh, if it is less than expected, then of course that could be poor for the economy and hence the currency as well. So those are the things we're looking at for the US dollar and similar concepts here on the CAD, right? So if the CAD uh, unemployment change comes out right now, you can see they have a forecast of 23.5K lost uh, or lost jobs, right? And then the actual figure will be you know, interesting to see. If that's better than expected, obviously you could see the CAD rally. And if it is worse than expected, the inverse, you could see the CAD fall. Now, Nick, where is it going? What's the, what's the direction? I get that question. Every single NFP and every single news event, people say, well, which way is it going to go? And the truth is, that <laughs> I don't know. It's news for a reason. Uh, the word news means that it is new information. So I don't know where it's going. However, that doesn't mean we can't do some prep work to talk about scenarios that could set up due to the news. So again, I like to keep an if then statement pretty much open ended. So what I mean by that is, what are we going to do if the US dollar comes out the gate very, very strong? And what are we going to do if the US dollar comes out of the gate very, very weak, right? That news data comes out very negative or very positive. I like to set up scenarios either direction and trade after the news. That's how I personally like to trade it. Some people like to trade the spike. Some people like to trade as it's happening. But for me personally, I like to look at the charts. I like to plan for potential moves because again, we get that we get that expansion of volatility, which causes some great trading opportunities a lot of the time. Some of my best trades ever have been post NFP, just riding these amazing moves that can sometimes occur. Now, one more thing before we jump into the charts, I do want to say this. So if you are you know, watching this thing and you're saying, well, I want to trade the spike. Remember that not every NFP has spikes but NFP always has some sort of impact on the market, whether it be immediate or gradual. You know, these are numbers and figures that really, really matter. So when I'm looking at the chart, I'm saying, you know, there's that potential for this thing to really dramatically move. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't, but the point is, Either way, it could set up for some great trades, whether you're an intraday trader or a swing trader uh, post news. So with that said, let's jump over to the charts and we'll start going through some of these, you guys. So this is the DXY. We'll start here as we usually do, talking about the dollar to see, you know, what is this thing doing before the US dollar news, which is, of course, that NFP coming out in about uh, 35 minutes here. So the dollar has been on a nice little tear Pre, prior to this news release. So the news is coming, right? So the news will come somewhere around here. But for now, you can see that the dollar has been very strong leading into the news. Now, why would this occur? Well, it's probably because there's a lot of traders and investors who are like, okay, things are looking good. There was some numbers. In fact, I'll try and pull something up for you guys. Let's see if I can pull up. Uh, let's see. Let's see if I can get this for you. So, um, RBI expands QE, cuts FY GDP, the Reserve Bank of India. Da, da, da. Okay, I'm looking for anything US job growth likely accelerated in May. So there was this sentiment change yesterday. You might have seen a lot of the dollar currencies moving dramatically yesterday. And there was this sentiment change where people were basically saying, hey, it's actually looking really good for the US prior to the actual release. You can see, we'll look at this for a moment. So the US economy likely added 650K jobs in May of 2021, well above 266K in April. As the economic recovery gathers steam, a minute, uh, okay, yeah. So basically, the idea here is that there is a lot of optimism around jobs, and that is what is probably driving the price up on the dollar right now. Now, the reason that that matters is because pay attention just in case those numbers are not as good as expected or even better than expected, that could still dramatically move price, especially when you get something like this, where there's so much optimism going into it. If those numbers disappoint, this thing could drop off a cliff. If those things are even better than expected or as is, you'd probably see some form of continue push up. Okay. So 
that sets everything up. If you were here with me from the start, now you're sort of fully caught up to where I am uh, in terms of the behind the scenes, the fundamentals. Now let's get into some of the technicals and talk about what's going on with the US dollar. So the US dollar has been pumping out, pushing some higher lows and some higher highs for the last several, maybe 48 hours, right? We had this high, we had a pullback, we put in you know, a push to you know, put a higher low here. This was kind of a lower high, but uh, more, you know, the interesting thing is you said, you saw this, which basically, you know, neglected all the sellers in this area. I actually ended up taking a loss on one of my US dollar shorts. Uh, it's all good, it happens. But um, anyways, price shot up to this point, really made a move up to this high and has actually since held the gains. That's a huge thing to note. You know, we've not only made those gains in the last 48 hours, but we've actually held them pretty well going into the news. So there's a lot of optimism around the dollar right now coming into this news release. The reason that that is pretty big is because like I said, if there's disappointing numbers, then that could be a huge miss for the dollar and that could be a big, big move back down. But otherwise, we probably see price hold this area or even push higher. So uh, I don't know, like I said, I don't know what the news numbers are going to be. I'm not here to, to pretend I know what they're going to be uh, like some of the people out there. But the idea here is, you know, what do we do either scenario? Well, the US dollar in general is sort of range bound. So let's go take a look at some of the currency pairs here on the one hour chart to see what they're doing prior to the news. We'll start with Euro USD uh, and see what's going on. So the Euro dollar has really dipped going into this release. Now on the one hour chart, you've got this pretty clear downtrend, but let's back out and we'll take a look at the four hour. So the four hour looks a little bit more interesting because you've got this uptrend overall and you've got some levels to watch out for. So if you're a Euro bull, this is how I kind of construct my setup. Uh, around NFP. I back out because I'm a swing trader mostly, right? I back out and I say, okay, well, I like the idea of getting long on the euro dollar personally, but maybe this spike, if it's good for the dollar short term, could be something that gets me into a setup I like. And that is exactly how I personally find my favorite setups uh, trading into NFP. So what I mean is that, you know, I have these levels marked. These are areas that I'd be interested in potentially buying. I could look at these a little bit closer. Should we see a move lower on the euro? What would that cause? Well, that would mean that we would usually see, if we're looking at EU, we'd see the euro go down relative to a strengthening US dollar if the news is bullish. On the flip side, what if the US dollar is bearish and the euro hence goes higher? Well, we'll talk about that scenario in a second, but let's first talk about this one here. So we have price moving higher. We have price pulling back into the news before it's coming out. So it obviously seems like people are expecting the US dollar to be strong. So, you know, that US dollar strength for me is not something that is fully blown. You know, if that if the news comes out, I'll have to reevaluate, obviously. But most likely, I am still pretty bearish on the dollar for the time being. So I'm viewing this as a potential pullback opportunity. I'm not buying before the news. Um, you know, if the news is bad, then obviously I'll look like, you know, I'll be like, oh, I wish I did. But uh, we're not playing that FOMO game here. We're playing, you know, realistic trading. So what I'm doing is I'm waiting for the news. If it does spike lower, there might be opportunities for me to look to get long on the longer time frames. Again, looking at this four hour chart, you've got a nice little uptrend here on the euro dollar. You know, uh, price is definitely testing, trying to pull back here. Uh, but for the most part, you know, should we see that there may be some opportunities to buy? Should we see scenario number one? Scenario number two leaves us with another interesting point. Well, where's the resistance? Where's, you know, where's some potential targets? Let's say you are long in the euro already, and then, you know, we get some bearish dollar news. Well, then obviously that would be very good for your position because you'd be looking at something like a pushback. Uh, to the high side. So in that case, you know, let's say that scenario number two com comes in and we get this guy right here. We get bearish dollar for the news, uh, like less than expected jobs. Things are not as good as expected. And then bam, you see the euro trade higher. Well, if that is to be the case, then a natural place for the euro to retest would be this previous high, in my opinion. Uh, and of course, that target that we've talked about many times on the uh, on the uh, the channel here, and uh, that is going to be a move back to the previous high of the year. So let's back out for a moment, and we'll talk about this. So check this out. So on the four hour chart, you've got uh, the previous high back from January, uh, and if we just zoom all the way over here, 
So there it is. Okay, so the previous high is right around 1.23. So if we get a serious move higher on the euro uh, relative to the dollar, there may be some setups to look for opportunities long. So I'm, I'm pretty much bullish on the euro. I'm bearish on the dollar overall due to the concerns around inflation. We've seen gold rise dramatically in response to that. Um, and you know we also see uh, the COT reports looking good for gold, but that's another topic. Maybe we'll get to gold in just a bit. We have about 30 minutes before the spike, you guys. So uh, stay with me. Stick around. If you're new here, make sure, to sub uh, make sure to subscribe. A lot of people who watch my channel are not actually subscribed to me. So if you subscribe, you'll get plenty more free trading content. No need to buy an expensive course. Just come hang out with us on the stream for free Monday through Friday. We do stream. So make sure to subscribe and click that bell so that you can come back and hang out with us in the future. Um, so like I said, if the euro gets strong due to a weakening dollar, uh, a potential target for people who are you know intraday trading uh, or, or maybe they already have a trade on the euro, I'd be focused on this area. That's a pretty, pretty safe area in terms of my opinion, like where I would say price could safely make a move to should we see a lot of weakness on the dollar and some strength on the euro. So that is my opinion on the euro USD. So the big areas of interest for me is that, you know, I like, a, I like the idea of a pullback further lower. If that happens, I could see myself looking for long setups on the euro dollar. Um, the other reason I'm kind of bullish on the euro right now is all the economic outlook pretty, pretty much looks pretty good for the second half of the year here in 2021. Uh, and so I've been actually looking for opportunities to go long on the euro, especially against the dollar. It's not my favorite currency right now to be going long on. I would have to say that's probably like the pound or the Canadian dollar uh, just from the, the fundamentals there. I like the, I like the cat a lot. Uh, it is in a, a, you know, train track to the, to the upside. So if that continues, I'd love to be long on the CAD, but we can talk about that in a moment, actually, because we do have CAD news as well as US dollar news. But let's jump over to the pound dollar. We'll keep moving along here. We got 30 minutes, like I said, before the spike. So stick around with me. Make sure to stick around until the very end because we're going to be doing some cool analysis uh, right as the spike comes out. But also, we have a guest coming on right after who's going to give us some insight as to what is going on with the uh, the, the numbers. Um, you may know him if you watch my streams uh, often. His name is Ivan. He's going to be coming on, I think, to hang out with us and, and to give his take on what the numbers are telling us. So stick around. We're going to give you guys as much coverage as we can. And let's talk about the pound dollar. So the pound dollar has been struggling as we've talked about on the streams. If you're regular here, we've talked about 1.42 as a level that has been really tough for the pound to get past. And this brings me to a really interesting scenario with the pound dollar because this one will be one to watch if we get some starking numbers. If we get some surprising numbers, definitely watch the pound dollar because check this out. So we'll do GBP. Let's look. I, I'm a visual person, so I don't know if you guys, uh, I hope you don't mind this, but I like to just draw it out. So let's say that we get some very, very uh, bearish numbers for the US dollar. Okay, let's talk about scenario number one. That could mean that we could get some higher pricing on the pound dollar, right? Because you're saying, well, if the dollar weakens, the pound should go up relatively speaking. So if that were to be the case, the biggest thing that I would say is maybe, maybe this could be it, you guys. For those of you who are like me and you're watching for that pound dollar to try and break out, maybe, just maybe, if we get some weakness on the dollar, we could see something like this. We could see that final move and break past this area that we've been struggling for so long to get past. So fingers crossed, you know, maybe we get something like that. I don't know what the news is going to be. Like I always say, um, the idea is, uh, the idea is basically to, to see, you know, if that US dollar comes out very, very negative, could be very interesting for something like this, you know, looking for that final, you know, that catalyst to push the pound dollar higher. That's what I like to look for in news and for, you know, just in general, the uh, fundamental side of things is I'm looking for a catalyst to push prices higher because at the end of the day, technical analysis is great, but it's not what pushes the, the price higher or lower. What pushes the price higher or lower is the fundamentals, what's going on with the actual market itself. So if you have you know, a, a demand for the pound due to the UK doing really well, or you know, a demand for the dollar because the US economy looks really promising, et cetera, right? those things are uh, more meaningful to me than just the technical analysis side of things, which we talk about on the streams on a regular basis. And I feel like not a lot of channels on YouTube talk about fundamentals. So if you enjoy that sort of stuff, like I said, smash that subscribe button and come back and hang out with me in the future. Uh, if you've never met me before, then you know, comment in the chat. It'd be cool to see if, if uh, people are new. Uh, if this is your first time to a stream, say something in the chat. I'd be interested to see. 
Uh, Dennis says, nice fundamental coverage, Nick. I like to learn this. Well, I'm glad that you're enjoying it and I'm hoping it's helping. Uh, it's, you know, to the best of my ability, just sharing it in a, in a way that's easy to understand. We will get to things like gold, you guys. So stick around with me. We're going to, we're going to keep chugging through charts. Let me talk more about that scenario that I talked about. So, you know, I mentioned with the pound dollar, maybe we get something like this. Maybe we get, uh, if we got weak US dollar news, you know, maybe that pound could accelerate relatively speaking and finally get us past that point that we've talked about on many streams, 1.42. That's like the, the barrier for price. I love the energy. Thanks so much. Hope you guys are all doing well and excited for uh, for the weekend. Uh, hope you guys are are having a nice trading week so far. Hi, Rick. Nice to meet you. Welcome to the, the stream. Thanks very much for showing up. I just bought gold, says Rick. Yeah, we're going to have to take a look at gold. So don't you worry. We will talk about that in just a moment. Um, first time on here. What time do you come on? Usually Monday through Friday at 9 a.m. Eastern. And then on my other channel, A1 Trading, we have two YouTube channels. We feature guests and uh, special speakers and other traders throughout the day. Usually yesterday we had like four hours of content on our other channel. So, um, you know, there's a, a lot to go around. But anyways, uh, with that pound dollar, so that's the scenario number one, right? That scenario where we see a weakening dollar. Let's talk about the other one. Let's talk about if the dollar comes out very, very strong, right? Um, and we say, well, the inverse could apply here. So let's, uh, let's talk about that. So uh, let's say that the dollar comes out and it's very, very, uh, very strong. What could that mean for this area? Well, I think what that could do is that if we get a very bullish US dollar, that could push us out of this range. So either ways, if we get a miss or a better than expected uh, figure from the US, then that could be a thing that pushes us either out of this range to the downside or maybe out of this range to the upside. So that is what would likely happen if you got a drastic miss or better than expected figure. And either ways, I think that there are decent trade setups. Now, I, as a fundamental trader, I probably wouldn't be looking to short the pound personally, even if we got very strong bullish numbers for the US dollar, because I really like the idea of going long in the pound. The UK, uh, their their outlook is very, very good in, in my view and also our view here at 81 Trading. Um, you know, we do some, some research behind the scenes and put it out to our members inside of the Discord group. So uh, a lot of the research that we've done is, is for us, uh, seems very bullish for the pound. So for now, not interested in shorting the pound dollar, but I am very interested in that scenario number one. Like we said, this idea of, um, you know, looking for that that break and retest opportunity there on the pound dollar, right? So yeah, so that's what that's what I'm looking for on the pound dollar. Again, coming into this, this is the four hour chart. So right now we're sort of caught in a, a range back and forth. So very, very much going to just be watching that. Keegan says, I'm hoping for 300K NFP figures. That would be a very uh, different number than is expected. And that could very much move the markets for sure. I'm new here and seeing a promising stream today. Uh, subscribe. Thanks very much, Samson. And thanks to all the guys and girls who are new to the channel and just subscribing. It means a lot. It really does help me out uh, to grow what we're trying to do here. One thing that you should know about me and my channel, um, you know, I am trying to essentially bring as much free stuff to this industry as possible. I'm trying to, uh, me and, and me and the team here, we, there's a, we've got an office here in Atlanta, Georgia, uh, and there's six of us. So we are trying to totally disrupt as much as we can the Forex and the trading industry by making as much stuff as possible completely 100% free. We are trying to put together a free Forex TV channel on our second channel. We're trying to do as much as we can uh, to, to make stuff available to traders. Now we do have things that are for sale, obviously, to, to help support the business and all that. But our main goal is to make as much stuff for just the average viewer on YouTube completely free. So if you support that, if you're if you're not down for $1,000 courses like we aren't, um, then make sure to subscribe, smash that like button. It really, really does help me out. So if you throw a like on the stream, uh, I promise I will do as best as I can to give you guys the best content that you are going to find in terms of NFP uh, each month and uh, streams throughout the month as well. With that said, thank you very much for your subscriptions and your support. It means a lot. So let's keep going. So we talked about the euro dollar. We talked about the pound dollar. Let's talk about gold. And then we are going to, of course, going to be talking about dollar CAD, which has some very, very interesting implications with the fact that we have CAD news and US dollar news coming out at the same time. So let's talk about gold. We're pulling it up right now. Don't you worry, Stellar. Uh, and to all my friends out there who are interested in uh, gold, let's talk about this for a moment coming into the big news. This is going to be a really interesting thing to watch because 
Again, we got to break this down. We got to say, what is the if and then statement? What is the scenarios that we could be looking for on the US dollar here relative to gold? Now, gold has been trading much higher off of the back. One of the biggest reasons is number one, uh, you've got inflation concerns around the US. We had high inflation numbers uh, recently. You know, we've seen numbers last month that were pretty much like, okay, that's kind of concerning. And the Fed has also, number two, the Fed has kind of been like, we don't want to raise rates if at all possible. Like we're trying to not raise rates. Whereas you have other places where the, the narrative is a bit different. New Zealand just came out and said, you know, we're thinking about raising rates as soon as September, 2022. The Fed is like, uh, we're going to wait to do that as much as possible. So that shift in narrative, you know, when you have high inflation, meaning the currency is being printed or there's lots of stimulus and lots of buybacks on bonds and all that stuff, right? When you have that scenario, that is devaluing a currency. High inflation, we, we most most of us probably understand that concept. Uh, then when you also have people who are, or the Fed, who is not super interested in raising rates to slow that inflation, um, that's concerning, right? Because that's, that's in my view right now, that is pretty much why I am bearish on the US dollar. Uh, if the news comes out though, and it's super positive for the US, uh, it could be something that prompts the Fed to raise rates or talk about raise rates, talk about tapering, doing stuff to stop the, the, um, the stop the violence, if you will, right? So that's that's what we're watching for. We're watching to see uh, what these numbers are going to yield for uh, outlook for the Fed. That is ultimately, you know, the biggest thing about currencies that you should know is that currencies all have central banks. Central banks set monetary policy, which includes raising and lowering interest rates, which has a huge impact on uh, money uh, investments, people moving money in and out of different places. You know, if a, if a country offers high interest, uh, interest rates, then that has the has the attractiveness to a lot of investors, so long as the economy is also pretty sound and inflation is not out of control. Um, so with that said, let's talk about gold. So for my friends out there who like trading gold, uh, gold is doing some interesting stuff. Yesterday, we saw a massive sell-off on gold. We saw a very big, uh, aggressive pullback, talking about all the way from our 1915 range down to at one point. 1856, uh, 57. That's a pretty aggressive sell-off on the the gold market. Uh, my, I'm going to say this. So uh, I don't know what the news is going to be, and no one else is going to know what the news is going to be here in the chat. So uh, I would say, and I'm not, I'm not picking on you. The reason I say that is because um, a lot of times we get people who come into the streams and are like, "What's the news going to do?" And none of us know for sure what the news is going to do. That's why it's called news. It's new information, and we right now are looking at scenarios either direction with the news to make a decision as to what we're going to, how we're going to react to whether it's a strengthening dollar or a weakening dollar or a strengthening CAD and a weakening CAD, right? So with that said, um, like I said, we got we had a lot of sell pressure in the last day or so on the gold market. We saw a dip pretty hard. And then uh, now we've sort of bottomed out. We put in this nice little pin bar here prior to the news, probably some profit taking from people who were short and probably, you know, maybe stepping out of the way of the news. Um, but what we do see is that coming into the news, we are fairly flat on gold. We are currently at a spot here that is kind of interesting. We could actually mark this as support now. Um, let's do this. And this may be something to watch. So now we also should mark this area that we had as demand. We should mark this as uh, supply just to be objective here. So let's just extend these levels out. And then so with gold, the gold market will usually react to NFP, especially if there's misses in numbers, because again, it's gold versus the US dollar. So if the US dollar comes out strong, let's talk about both scenarios. So if we're looking at XAU, USD, and we say the US dollar comes out strong, that could push some fresh lows for the gold market. Uh, what I mean by that is that strong misses, like if there's a, if there's a, uh, sorry, if there's a better than expected number or things just look really good for jobs here in the U S if that is the case, we could totally see a break underneath this 1860 level. And that break could be followed by some sell pressure for the rest of the day, maybe even get us down to like 1840, which is sort of our next uh, level of support. So if there's a couple ways you can look at that. You can either say, well, if I'm an intraday trader and I see to a spike to the downside, I'm looking for sell opportunities to try and ride that move. 
uh, or maybe if you're if you're some sort of contrarian trader or a swing trader, maybe there's some opportunities off of that expansion and volatility to look for setups that get you long on gold if you're looking to get long. Again, it's going to come down to partially your strategies. Everyone has their own unique style of trading and their own approach to trading. So if you're looking at this and you're saying, well, if gold spikes the downside, maybe that's an opportunity for me to get long. Uh, you know, you've got some scenarios that that could be interesting, right? We've been on a massive bull train here. We have have since broken out of this trend line. We've been on a sell trend, you know, off of the back of this recent breakout. And so as we move lower and we tag this level of support at 18, you know, 60 or so and bounce off that, uh, the question is, you know, if this news comes out super negative, we could bust back down underneath that level. And maybe there could be some long setups there. So if you've been watching my streams, you know that I am overall bullish on gold right now. The COT report numbers look very good for bulls on gold, at least in hindsight. That can change. We can watch and see, you know, we'll be covering that on the streams in the future to see if the news uh, changes that. But I should say, you know, the COT reports look pretty good for gold right now. There's a lot of uh, fundamentals that make sense to me uh, in terms of being a, a buyer of gold. So I would love to see uh, a discount further on gold. If that were to happen, maybe I could see myself looking for, for gold trade setups. And maybe, you know, if we really got sell heavy, maybe a move down to 1810, 1840, both of those look like areas that I could potentially see myself looking on the lower time frames for trade setups on the long side. So let me give you a quick scenario. Let's say that that does happen. Uh, you know, there's some decent risk to reward here in my view. You know, let's say that you go for this level here. You put a stop just below the swing. Uh, oh, sorry, I'm putting on the wrong one. Uh, let's say you you that next level breaks down and then you put uh, a stop somewhere underneath structure. And then you're saying like something like this, that gives you a pretty crazy risk to reward if you were to keep your stop that tight. Something around like a five to one. Not every trader trades with that big of a risk to reward. Uh, some people like to trail stops like me. I personally like to trail stops. So maybe I'll do something, you know, let's say that I took a trade like that. Price comes down and then I get into the trade. Kind of looks weird with no reward on there. But let's say price starts moving higher. I could see myself trailing that stop and trying to ride this thing back even above highs if possible. That's the whole idea with trailing stops. But um, again, the idea there is I think you get some de decent risk to reward setup should price pull back to that point. Of course, not financial advice. I'm just sharing my thoughts and opinions. Uh, I want you guys to remember, please be careful going into these news events. A lot of times people lose a lot of money because they get super greedy and they're just looking to, to gamble the spike. Please don't do that. It's a super quick way to lose a lot of money. Um, I'll tell a quick story before we keep going. So back when I was like a, a newer trader in Forex, um, I was looking at news and I was like, I want to trade the spikes. And this is years ago. So uh, I was sitting there and I was like, I want to trade the spikes. So I wrote a robot. I'm a, I'm a software engineer. I, I wrote a robot that would trade the release, right? It would buy if it went up, it would sell if the numbers looked bad. Um, and it worked really well for a while. I made like two or $3,000, which for me, like back then I was in college, that was like great money. And then one day, I lost it all on one single trade because basically what I did is I put a sell stop and a buy stop, right? And then price on the release shot up and then shot down and then shot back up. So I got triggered on both and stopped out on both for a huge loss because of the massive slippage that every broker does on the release. Every broker widens their spreads upcoming into the news because they want to cover themselves. They don't want to take a bunch of risk for you because essentially if everyone is taking ginormous trades going into the, the news uh, and everyone blows their accounts, they take on this giant like liability of like, well, where's all that money? You know, when you, when you execute a trade, your broker does it for you. But if you can't pay them back, they, they take the, the loss, right? So they're not going to do that. They're, they're a business, they're smart and rightfully so they, they widen their spreads and they make it so that you can't do that stuff. Um, so I would just be, I'd say, be very, very careful trading the news spike. A lot of people lose a lot of money doing that. And it is more, in my opinion, more of a gamble than anything. Uh, but there are some great setups on the back of it. So again, looking at gold, uh, let's talk about the other scenario. Let's say that the US dollar gets very weak and we see a spike to the upside on gold. For the gold bulls out there, that could be great if you're holding on to positions. Uh, keep an eye on this level if you're intraday. Maybe there's, you know, watch for, for uh, you know, 
opportunities there, uh, maybe breaks and retests, or if you're sell, sell bias and you see something set up on the lower time frames that looks bearish, you know, there's lots of volatility that comes off of the back of this. Uh, again, guys, we've got the news in 12 minutes. So stick around with me, stay for the spike because we're going to watch the spike together and I'm going to give you guys some reactions. And then we are going to be having a, a, a special guest come on who's going to talk about the numbers with me um, and share his thoughts. His name is Ivan. He's a friend of mine. He's got uh, you know, he's got some great knowledge in terms of the market. So we're going to have him pop on the stream, uh, come on the show and hang out with me as well. 840 people here. Let's keep going. We're going to take a look at dollar CAD, but before I do, uh, we do these streams completely for free. This is stuff that, you know, uh, we really would appreciate if you, if you subscribe to my channel. Also, we have another channel that we do shows throughout the day on, um, we have a team of people here in Atlanta, Georgia, trying to put this stuff on. If you are enjoying the content, do me a favor, run that like button up, smash that like button real quick. These are completely free streams. We don't sell thousand dollar courses. We're, we're very anti expensive courses. And if you're with us on that journey, then definitely, or if you're with us on that mission, make sure to smash that like button down below. 850 people. You guys are awesome. Thanks so much for being here. Let's move, uh, move on to dollar CAD. Now dollar CAD, you might say, why are you looking at dollar CAD? But dollar CAD is a very important one to note because check this out. We'll go back to this just for a fresh reminder. The dollar is impacted by the news today, and so is the CAD. So you have CAD employment change, and you have the US employment change. And the reason it, that that is so meaningful is that it makes for a sort of interesting scenario because you have both of these currencies coming into the news uh, very, very much being watched and very much going to be traded based on the fresh data. Okay, so looking at dollar CAD, we're looking at the four hour chart. We are back and forth on this market. We recently formed a low on the dollar CAD, but here's what I will say if you're looking to trade this thing, watch for this range to potentially be broken. If the US dollar comes out very strong today, let's talk about that. Let's say that we're my, my typing or my writing is terrible. Sorry about that. Let's say that we're looking at USD CAD and we say, well, if the US dollar comes out of the gate very, very strong off of that news, we could see a break to the upside that could lead to some higher prices short term. Now, I am short biased on this currency pair. I like the idea of buying the Canadian dollar much more than I do buying the US dollar. But going into the news, the news could spike us the other direction. So I'm sort of sitting on the sidelines waiting for setups. The setups that I personally like the most on the dollar CAD are a pullback to 1.226. I really like the idea of selling the dollar CAD here. It lines up very nicely on the higher time frames for a great swing trade. In my view, you know, you have this level here. If price were to pull back there, overall downtrend still in control here. Uh, but again, this is what I like to use the spikes for. I like for that opportunity to potentially see a move up to uh, resistance, up to levels of interest, something like this. The 38.2 looks very good for uh, for a potential short for me. I do think that overall this currency pair is probably headed higher unless we see some drastic changes on the US dollar. Um, just to reiterate, the numbers are expected to be 645,000 new jobs created for the US. Uh, and then in terms of the Canadian dollar, we're expected to lose 23.5 thousand uh, jobs. So if either one of these numbers are dramatically different, we're going to evaluate that. So again, stay with us until after the spike. We've got eight minutes to go uh, before the news actually comes out. Once it comes out, watch the spike because the spike is interesting, but also the numbers. What are the numbers going to tell us about potentially further movements for the CAD in the US? Everyone sort of wants to trade NFP because they want to watch the spike and they want to trade the spike. And I'm not going to lie, it's kind of fun to watch. But the bigger implications of the jobs created or jobs lost in different countries can cause prices to drive higher or drive lower on these currency pairs for days at a time sometimes. So again, Keep that in mind. This is not just a one and done moment. This is a potentially, uh, you know, day moving, week moving, maybe even for the rest of the month if there's a dramatic, dramatic shift. So again, that's what we're watching for. That's what we're waiting to see. If it's a big move, great. If it's not a big move, you know, sometimes that happens. Sometimes we come to the news and it just sort of like moves a little bit and doesn't do much if the numbers are perfectly as expected. Um, usually it's when things are, you know, unexpected, when something crazy happens, that's when NFP usually goes wild. And occasionally like last month, last month we saw that happen. So again, to reiterate on dollar CAD, uh, if you see a strong dollar, watch for this setup. I really like that. I think that there's some pretty decent risk reward. If you're just a technical trader and you think that the dollar has more to pull back on, especially if you're shorter term, maybe there's some opportunity to look at something like that. 
Again, you guys know this is not, I'm not telling you to go do this. I'm telling you, you know, this is just an idea to think about. Whatever you do with your trading, you should have a strategy. You should have risk management plans. You should have everything in line before you take any real money trades. Please be very careful before you take any trades. Don't do stupid things. Like uh, I'm asking you on behalf of you, like don't be stupid with your money. We should all, we should all strive to be a little bit more uh, intelligent and conservative with our money because, uh, you know, if you're looking to gamble, honestly, you should probably just go to Vegas or go to your local casino if you have one, because it's honestly more fun uh, to gamble that way because then they give you drinks and you have a great time and then you can lose your money. But if you're looking to gamble in the markets, I would say it's just a waste of time because again, if I'm going to gamble, I might as well go have fun with it. Uh, but uh, in terms of the markets, please be conservative. Please be, you know, careful with your risk. Don't be, don't be crazy and all this and that. You guys know that's what we're about here on the channel. I'm actually trying to to provide value to you. I don't have, you know, an incentive to tell you to go, you know, use a ginormous lot size and make a ton of money or, you know, I don't fake that stuff on my channel. A lot of what you see on social media, people talking about, oh, I flipped my account three times this week. It's mostly nonsense. Um, you know, ask them for a track record and they won't really be able to provide it for you. Uh, you know, that's the reality is, is most people who claim those ginormous claims, they don't have any, um, you know, they don't have anything to back it. They're just, they're just showing you Lambos and they tell you that that's their track record. That's not a track record. Uh, a Lambo, a nice car, you know, having money doesn't mean that you got it from trading and that you did it correctly. Anyways, talking about the dollar CAD, that's the scenario number one. Scenario number two could be interesting as well. Um, you know, if we see a uh, like a stark rejection, a sharp rejection here at resistance, that's another scenario that could be very, very interesting, right? What if we see something like this? What if we see, you know, a strong sell on the USD CAD? Right? What if we see the dollar come in very weak and maybe Canada's numbers are better than expected? This is another scenario that we have to keep an eye on because you could see something like this. You could see you know, prices move back down to the bottom of the range. And if you're a range trader or you're just short bias on the dollar CAD, those scenarios look very, very interesting. I took a short, uh, I'm logged out of my broker on this one, but um, I took a short right around uh, here on the dollar CAD. I ended up getting stopped out on a trailing stop somewhere in here, uh, but I did not choose to, to re-enter that sell again, just because we have news around the corner. Five minutes, you guys, until the news spike occurs. Don't go anywhere after though, because we're going to be having some, uh, we're going to have a guest come on and do a little bit of analysis with us on the post side of things. You know, what, what did the numbers really tell us? What could that move the market for the next week? You know, that sort of thing. So stay with us until that happens. We've got a very booked show today for you. We're at 900 163 people. I think it's almost a record uh, of how many people we've had on the stream. So I am very, very thankful for you guys for being here and hanging out. Thanks so much. It really does mean a lot to me. If you're new here, make sure to subscribe. We do this. We do streams for free, like throughout the week. We've got lots of different shows, uh, myself and other people. So again, um, uh, Richard, what's, what's up with your pink, pink, pink stuff? Uh, <laughs> I'm going to have to put you in timeout. Anyways, uh, yeah. So with that said, so yeah, this Richard guy has 20 YouTube accounts. What's going on in the chat, you guys? We have some wild, wild and stuff. Any hearts racing at the moment, says Robert. <laughs> guys, we've got just a few minutes and look at that. We are just about a thousand people on the stream. That is absolutely crazy. Again, we've got just three minutes here before the news. Is there anything else you guys want to look at uh, before the, the news comes out? Like, let me know, drop in the chat what you want and uh, we'll try and pull pull maybe one more up before just to get an idea. I'm going to watch dollar CAD on the spike just because uh, that is usually a, a pretty big moving one. So we'll talk about dollar CAD. We'll talk about uh, gold. Once the market actually releases the news, we'll definitely take a look there. I, I banned his account, uh, but it seems like he does have more than one. So you guys are you guys are going through it with me here. Okay, silver, US 30. Yeah, well, US 30 could actually be moved by this. Uh, you know, watching US 30 is is uh, sort of interesting to watch. Guys, I got to take a picture of this. 1,011 people on the chat. That is crazy. What's up, you guys? Man, that's kind of weird to think about. Like, I'm sitting here, 1,026. You got so many people hanging out with me uh, right before the news. Again, we've got two minutes here before the news. That is just wild. So thanks everybody for being here. Uh, Richard is back with pink, pink. What the heck is going on? Uh, we got a crazy, crazy stream today, you guys. So, um, 
Okay, so with that said, US 30 could be a mover. Uh, I'm going to go back to gold for just a moment, see if there's anything happening before the spike. Again, here on the one hour chart, you've got just sort of consolidation prior to the release. Again, stay with me after the stream though, uh, after the after the release, because we're going to have a guest come on and explain with me uh, what's going on, what the numbers really truly mean. And then of course, we will pull the numbers up and give you guys uh, our best evaluation. 1,046 people. That is just wild, you guys. Usually we've got like 500 or 600 people in here, which is awesome. But 1,047 is just amazing. So thank you guys for, for watching. Um, yeah, so so let's see. We've got one minute. So let's let's pull up. What do you guys want to watch? Real quick, comment. Let's, let's see what you guys want to watch. What do you want to watch on the spike? Which chart should I pull up for the spike? Comment it really quick because we only have a few... Uh, we've got 50 seconds here. So let me know which one do you want to watch? You want to watch gold? You want to watch dollar cad? Dollar cad will be interesting as well, but we can we can keep it on gold, but just comment which one you want and I'll try and pull it up uh, for which chart you want to watch on the spike. And then don't worry, we'll go after the spike and talk about the results. Okay, lots of people saying gold. So I guess we'll keep it on gold for our friends who, who want to see gold. Again, going to be evaluating the spike here. We've got 20 seconds here, you guys, before the release. Everybody, take a deep breath for just a moment here. Calm down. We're uh, we're we're gonna be fine either ways. Please uh, please risk responsibly. Here we go. Ten seconds, you guys, and a uh, thousand seventy three people here. That is just insane, you guys. Thanks so much. All right, well, here's the news. Let's see. Let's see if there's anything big. Oh, look at that. Gold starting out strong here. Let's see if that continues. Gold spiking to the upside there. Look at that. Uh, what is that? Nothing, nothing ginormous, but a, a decent move there. Let's look at the 15 minute chart again, spiking to the upside, looking bullish here. Look at that gold move go. Uh, so that looks like it's bearish for the US dollar. What's what's going on with uh, some of the other ones? Dollar CAD, is that one moving? Dollar CAD uh, sort of got a little bit of a blip here, selling off just a bit. Uh, let's see if the numbers are in just yet. We'll see. We'll pull up forexfactory.com and then we will go ahead and pull this up. So USD, CAD, uh, anything here yet? Let's see. Forex Factory has probably got Forex Factory probably has 50,000 people refreshing this page right now. So I wouldn't be surprised if it's going to be slow. But anyways, we can just keep looking at the spike until that pulls up. Uh, so dollar CAD pushing lower. What about the euro dollar here? The euro dollar is taking a spike to the upside here. Uh, nice little move. What is that? Um, you know, that's 30 pips. That's that's a pretty decent move, you guys. Uh, not a big miss, but still a pretty good uh, pretty good number there. So not a big miss. So Sean, 559K. Thank you guys for the numbers. Yeah, we got 559K uh, in terms of new jobs created. So not as much as expected, but still pretty good. 1,096 people. We're making records here on the thing. That's why you guys keep seeing me uh, screenshot. I'm just proud of you guys for, for hanging out and building this community. You guys have to remember, um, you know, when I started these streams, I'm sitting there in my college dorm and I got like 10 people watching me and I thought it was the coolest thing ever. And, and shout out to those people who stuck around, but uh, just wild. Look at that, you guys. The euro is pushing higher here. Again, uh, jobs missing by just a bit here, and the reaction seems to be pretty big. Uh, Canada job loss, ooh, 68K, really? Let's go look at CAD yen. Uh, what's the CAD doing? So CAD is selling off here. Pretty big spike there to the downside. Um, you know, coming in somewhere around 20 pips. Uh, what about CAD Swiss, just out of curiosity? Also pushing lower there, probably doing some big pullbacks there. Might be interested in, interested in some uh, some CAD movements there. Uh, check this out, dollar CAD, still selling off of resistance and finding some stark rejection there off of that level. Again, US dollar numbers were not so great, but what's interesting is, is same with... Uh, same with the CAD numbers. Let's look at this. Let's see if we get an updated thing. Uh, again, I think there's probably like <laughs> there's probably like 50, 100,000 people like refreshing this page right now. So it's going to be a little bit slow. But thank you guys. So 559K versus 650K is what uh, Stellar shared with us. So appreciate that. Um, so is the US news considered good or bad? Well, the news was less than expected, not by a whole lot. So it's not a massive change. So, um, so, th so that's the thing. So we're, we're looking at, uh, looking at this and saying, you know, if it's less than expected, but Canada seems to, se seems to have not done as well. Myfxbook.com. We can go here. Uh, can we go to news economic calendar? Um, 
let's see. What's today? I don't know how to use this calendar because I never use it. Um, okay, okay, so here's... Okay, yeah. So the actual came out at... Yes, you're right. So we had an, an expected uh, consensus there for Canada's net change in employment to be minus 20K, actually had minus 68K. And then, so both numbers were not great. But again, it seems like what's interesting here is it seems like Canada, um, as expected for that number, uh, interesting. Interesting. So, well, un unemployment rate came out as better than expected here for the US just slightly. And then we had jobs that were just about the same or, or pretty much close to, not not super close, but a little bit of a mess. So the US dollar looks a little bit bearish today. Uh, and the Euro USD really spiking higher. What's that pound? Ooh, you guys, did we get it? Did we get the push? No, not 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 to the full extent, but looking promising here. Uh, we talked about this. This is like my number one setup that I wanna be involved in right now is a breakout and retest on the uh, on a, a break and retest on the pound dollar, something like this, right? If we get that set up, it could be very, very interesting. Again, stick around with me, guys, for a few more minutes. We're going to have uh, another guest come on and explain some of the news with me, uh, help me to uh, analyze it and to give you guys what we have to talk about. So, um, yeah, I mean, it seems like obviously we have some spikes on the U.S. dollar. Uh, the pound dollar off of the lows here up 85 pips. That's actually a pretty steep movement there. Uh, it's not as big as last month, but it's still big nonetheless. Uh, so we will definitely have that. Here he is. Ivan is uh, tuned into the stream. Let me bring him in. Uh, Ivan, you ready, man? I'm always ready. I was born ready. Ivan is always <laughs> ready. Welcome to the show, Ivan FX. What's going on, man? I'm doing well. Doing well. And, yeah, uh, what do you what do you think about the numbers? Well, disappointing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, I was I was saying the same thing. The U.S. really uh, sold up. Well, I guess you're kind of short bias on the dollar, right? Yeah, I'm short dollar bias. Yeah. Okay. So I want I want to just want to go higher. The thing is, is I saw the ADP yesterday and it was way above expectations. I'm like, should NFP do well then too? So I was around mental mental expectations was around eight or nine hundred thousand, and we didn't do that. So. <laughs> Right, right. I was kind of low key, kind of like hoping that the dollar could get a little bit stronger so I could look for some short setups just because I like the nature of, uh, I think you're the same way. Like I like to find something that's discounted, to find something pulling back to look for a setup. But yeah, so we had, um, so just to list off the numbers for the people in the chat. Uh, so we basically had uh, actual numbers come out at 559K new jobs for the US uh, compared to around the 645, 650 forecast for jobs. Uh, in terms of Canada, we had 68K jobs lost compared to 23.5 forecasted loss. So um, yeah, so some missing numbers for CAD. What do you think about the CAD, Ivan? I haven't looked at it, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you want to? Do you want to share your screen, or how do you want to do this? I mean, no, I'm just I just need to look at the number. To be honest, I just need to. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just looked at NFP and the unemployment rate, which is better than expected. So I'm like, good. And right. just can't look at the screen. No, I can't. So I need to look at myself. So and the thing is, is that cat, 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 and then cat. Okay. Yeah. Um, unemployment rate is the same. Still high, I would say. Uh, right. It is still high, so I can't remember on the top of my head what uh, pre-COVID was. But if if an if a good economy should have around three or four percent unemployment, you always want to have something, so you, somebody can still have some movement in the economy. I think we still need to go lower down. So I think okay, it is it is okay, but it would have been it would have should have been better. Though right. the lockdowns has. And impact on this one, so that's kind of when we see lockdowns uh, getting re being revised and maybe removed, then we may see a better employment rates. Right. Yeah, and and that's definitely something to watch for for Canada for sure. I think what's interesting with the the Canadian dollars, just the the you know at first I was like, okay, well unemployment change didn't change for Canada, but um, what was it again for the the U.S. employment rate? So it was actually better Six, than expected. No, 5 5.8 compared to 5.9. Yet we we you know underperform on the dollar. So for maybe for the newer traders, what, how would you explain that? So we we had less jobs created than expected, but we have 5.8 instead of 5.9. Why would the dollar be selling off on the reaction of that? 
Um, the reaction would be, well, if you had an, a million or a 900,000 on the NFP, that would be looking into, are we going to taper? Are we going to end the stimulus to the economy? That is kind of the end of the stimulus. So since now we're going back down to kind of more normal uh, non-farm payroll numbers, we're back to square one. We're back to dollar weakness. We're back to still keeping the policy in, in place. We're still doing what we have been doing so far. So it's just a continuation. We are still not there where the economy is overheating, where people are like, wow, look at these numbers. We're going crazy. We're going, we are, it's fearful. That's kind of what I've seen in the past days on the dollar bullishness is traders or investors have seen what if NFP comes in so hard, we are overshooting, we're doing too well. This is going absolutely crazy because if an economy is doing too well, well, it was going to be too expensive. It's going to be, people are going not, not being able to get work be, uh, because the costs are too high. And if no, if everyone is employed, where are you going to find your new workers for your, for your uh, ma uh, massive amounts of orders that you have? So compared to one thing I saw on, on TikTok yesterday, I don't know if it matters, but on TikTok, it's a guy, a sewage guy. He says that the restaurants in the area can't find people. The construction people, the construction companies cannot find employers. He can't find it, find people to employ. So he's asking, where do we find people to employ? Then the question becomes, when we have that situation, then business are going to hurt. People are going to lose out of the business because going to lose business because they can't fulfill the orders within the time of the expecting of the clients. So there is a trouble with being too hot, being too strong. So this is good. This is kind of okay. Interesting. Yeah, I actually really like the way you explained that with the US dollar. So it was like, you know, because it's one of those things. It's like everyone is sort of um, the reason I have a hard time personally, and you, and you might relate to this, the hard time I have with being super bullish on the dollar is you're like sort of like hoping and praying that something pokes the Fed to be like, hey, raise rates. And that's like, you know, if they keep saying we don't want to raise rates, we want to keep them low, we want to let the economy do its thing. Like if they keep saying that it's going to take something really impressive to like prompt that response. And so we didn't get it today. So that's a, that's a great way of pointing out, uh, you know, that dollar weakness uh, reaction to the news. It's like, well, if you want the Fed to do something, you need something crazy. And it just wasn't there today. So, um, you know, we did have a pretty bearish rejection reaction to the US dollar. So great way of explaining that, Ivan. That was better than I that actually like I'm going to use that in the future. That's a great way of putting it, right? You need that, you need that like poke, that push to like really get it to move, um, to, to, to move the needle for the Fed to like really pay attention to it. So really well, well explained, man. <laughs> so another thing to mention here is Fed has said they're expecting to overshoot short term, but it's going to be short term. So we saw NFP, was it, can't remember, was it 900,000 a couple of weeks ago? Yeah, it was and like then we got insane. like, and then it was, and then next week it was reversed down to seven hundred thousand, and then that week was also two hundred sixty-six or something, and now we're just back to five hundred. So that week that was whoa, amazing. Now we're back to, okay, we're growing, we're growing, but it, we're not falling, and that's kind of the thing is we need America as a Norwegian, we need America because they are the reserve currency, they are the reserve country. If dollar goes to, if dollar if the economy in America goes bad, we kind of lose, we kind of, we kind of screwed. So we need them to do well. So others can then get the benefits because if America goes well, what happens to Mexico? What happens to the US dollar? What happens to gold? What happens to oil? What happens to everything? So we just right. need the main engine to do well. So the others can also do well too. Sure, sure. That's, so, that's a good point as well. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, very, very interesting just watching the the reaction here to the dollar. The dollar was just so green uh, going up into into this news release. We consolidated, like I pointed out, on my stream. Um, how did your stream go, by the way? I was on fire. Nice. You, yeah, I, know. I always have to like, dude, I, on the way into work today, I like had my music going. I was like, okay, I'm, I got to get pumped up because it's a lot of energy to, to put on a stream like this. 
<laughs> yeah. So, so as a, for me and my stream, what did I do? I, I pointed out that the uh, dollar was at M3 for the month. It couldn't go higher for me to be, okay, I, st I still will be participating for this month. So this is to me more like a, a breather that yes, finally, okay, cool. We are actually have some normality. The market are still responding how I want it to be because if we rose up now, where is it going to go? Sure. Where are we going? So this is kind of, this is what I really wanted to see. So I see people saying that we should buy gold. You're already too late. And this wasn't a buy opportunity. Now you have the higher high. Now, now you can look for maybe something, but it wasn't anything previously. Right now we're just cool. We are back to where we wanted to be. So the pullbacks are coming in soon. That's kind of what you're expecting either today or on Monday or Tuesday. So I don't know when, but, uh, this is what you want to see now coming up to resistance. I said around 1890, you'll probably see some sellers coming in. So right. we're coming into where we're going to go next. Yeah. Very interesting. And I, and I kind of am with you on the same page. I think like this sort of resumes the, the, the dollar bearishness thesis, you know, just watching the last few days, I was like, Hmm, well, maybe the numbers come out and it's like super good for the dollar. And then I got to like rethink some things, but this, like you said, it, it is kind of a, 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 a refresher just to be like, okay, well, um, the U S dollar didn't have what it was, what it was looking for. It, you know, the numbers were, you know, not awful, awful, but they weren't nearly as good as they were hyping them up. So, um, yeah, so great stuff. Ivan, uh, thanks very much. Uh, we're just going to probably call it quits here pretty quick. Uh, I don't know. You're probably the same way. Probably, uh, probably a little bit, uh, tired after all that streaming. Can I just say one more thing? Yeah. I wanted gold to be low on 8th of June back in gold May. On 8th of June. Let's pull up gold. Oh, we're already on gold. No, so, gold. I want that to be the low. Mm. Today is 4th, 7th on Monday. Yep. Maybe you're a bit too early. Maybe you're a bit just a day early on the trading day. Mm -hmm. Maybe this is the low for Jude. Should should know. be interesting to watch. I mean, I don't know. I think uh, you know, so long as the dollar bearish thesis, you know, stays in here, I would not be surprised to see gold tag right back up to 1950. Uh, it might not be immediate. There might be some pauses along the way, but a move back to where we were just prior to this, again, with all that concern, is not out of the question. And in fact, I would say personally. You might agree like this is sort of that's sort of like the path of least resistance like where does price want to go well we just sort of erased all of that super bullishness price probably wants to drift higher up to the to the highs again <laughs> and the other thing is gold goes up in staircases and falls down with the elevator yes or the lift For so sure. um <laughs> another another just another um just another indication that you have to be careful please and I, I don't think you blow your account yesterday on gold. I definitely didn't blow my account on yesterday on gold. And I kind of, that's where we need to be. We shouldn't risk too much on gold. And yes, it is exciting, but please, for yes. the love of everything that you love, don't risk your whole account on it. Yes, seriously. And and that was, uh, I got a cool message from, for those of you guys in the audience, I got a message from Ivan yesterday and he said, we have a, we have a, a, a big job to do to try and encourage people as much as possible to, to be safe, be conservative. Don't be stupid with your money. Uh, you know, although it is, it's kind of like when you go to a casino and they give you chips to like displace you from your money. So you're not like too concerned about losing your money because you're just losing chips. It's similar in Forex. A lot of people don't like, don't realize what they're doing themselves. They'll take ginormous trades because it's like a video game to them. But uh, you got to be careful. You got to be, you know, tolerant to, to how much risk you're taking. If you're taking too much risk because you want to make a bunch of money, it's a very quick way to the poorhouse. And gold is probably, it is probably the fakest like glimmer of hope literally for, for new traders because they're like, oh, it's shiny. I can make a lot of money on gold, but uh, it is a dangerous place. So um, great, great points from Ivan here. Thanks very much for coming on and, and uh, helping to to evaluate everything that just happened. Guys, go follow Ivan. Uh, he's I've been loving his content. I discovered him a few weeks ago and we've been just uh, hanging out and doing cool content together since. So if you guys enjoy his content, find him on YouTube, Ivan FX. You can just search him up, uh, his name there on the screen. You can see it. Just type that into YouTube and go give him a subscription here on YouTube as well. Thanks, Ivan. Thank you very much for joining. All Thank right. You, <laughs>
<laughs> yes, that guys, that was the Ivan FX. Thanks for having him on again. Always a pleasure. Um, so yeah, so great stream today. We had a lot of thoughts, a lot of big, big interesting things happen uh, with this US dollar, you know, bullishness, uh, sorry, bearishness continued for me. There, you know, people are asking, well, what's the setups? What are the trades? You know, for me, the setups are looking for opportunities. Should this dollar give back uh, anymore, you know, looking for opportunities to try and go short on it. So for me, you know, I'm looking at things like dollar CAD. Let's see if I can switch the view around. Think of things like dollar CAD. Can I see, you know, a pullback to, to resistance? Should we get some short term bullishness in the dollar? I'd like to look for, for short opportunities, you know, pound dollar. Uh, I have same concept. I'm still looking to see, can we get that break above the retest looking for opportunities to try and go short on the dollar personally. Please remember that these are just my thoughts and opinions. I'm not here to tell you what to do with your money. Um, you know, as always, like, please, like, like Ivan was trying to, to make very clear to you guys, like, please be careful. Don't be stupid with your money. Um, now, before I do go, I want to say, uh, if you guys are not already inside of our private Discord, we have a Discord community. It is run by myself and our other team members here at A1 Trading. If you're not already in there, uh, it is a place where I share all of my trades. We also have a few other analysts who share their trades in real time, you know, entries, exits, analysis. We have chat rooms. We do live coaching webinars with a guy named Joe uh, out in Australia. He's like a 14-year trading veteran, and he loves to work with traders and answer questions. So if any of that stuff sounds interesting, like I said, Said, uh, definitely don't hesitate to check out the link down below in the description. I'll show you guys what it looks like really quick. Um, so I'll pull this up here and we can take a look at this. So here's the Discord. If you are new, if you are not, if you're not, you know, been watching my channel for a little while and this is new concept to you, I share my trades in here. So you can see, you know, if I take a trade, there it is with full interest uh, reasoning behind it, right? So the fundamental analysis, the technical analysis. Frank shares his trades. We also have Patrick who shares his. He's from Germany. Frank's also here in the US with me. We have chat rooms so you can chat with other traders, like minded people who, you know, uh, if you if you like the style that I put out on YouTube and you like the style that, you know, our whole company tries to strive for, which is, you know, down to earth, realistic trading concepts. If that sounds helpful to you or you you relate to that, come join us inside of the private discord. There's a link down below in the description to sign up for this. And on top of that, you also get a promo code there that takes off some of the costs of joining the group. So check that out for a discount and plug that promo code in there and you should get access for a cheaper price. Try us out for a month. I am very confident that you'll enjoy the group. Uh, if you enjoy the content I put out on YouTube, that is where you can take it to the next level and come hang out with us. Uh, with that said, is it free? No, it's not. There's a, I have a, a staff of people that I got to keep paid uh, and that is how I'm able to do that. So it is a community that costs a, a fee. It is a monthly fee or if you pay for the one-time option, then you just have to pay one time. Anyways, you guys, that's all I've got. Uh, like I said, links are down below in the description for that. Andrew says, super worth the entry fee. Well, thank you very much, Andrew. I'm glad that you're liking that. Um, so with that said, I'm going to be looking for setups myself. There are definitely some trades that I plan on taking today. And of course, I will share those in the private Discord. Should I take anything, you guys will be the first to know about it there. So with that said, guys, going to hop off here. Uh, about an hour stream, we hit 1,000 75 viewers, which is just record breaking. So thank you for being here. Thank you for supporting the content. Make sure to subscribe if you're new, come back and see me again in the future and uh, have a great rest of your day and happy weekend, you guys. See you next time.